Hey everybody, Doug here, and welcome to our series of Kita FX conventional panel videos. In today's video, I'd like to give you a few tips that will ensure that you're going to have a successful installation of the Kita FX5 conventional fire alarm panel. First, select a mounting location. Be sure that the mounting location is free of construction, dust, and debris. Also, make sure that location is not going to be influenced by extreme temperature ranges and humidity. Our recommended temperature operating range for the control panel is 32 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 to 49 degrees Celsius. The humidity should be 5 to 93 percent non-condensing at 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. Once you have a location selected, please refer to your local and national codes to ensure that the cabinet is going to be mounted at the correct height and an acceptable location. Once you have the location selected, when you want to surface mount the cabinet, you're going to position the cabinet on the finished wall surface and then secure the cabinet to the wall utilizing the surface mounted holes inside the wall box of the cabinet. If you need to semi flush mount the cabinet, order the F-Trim35R. The F-Trim35R will include four flanges, one for the top, one for the bottom, and one for each side. You'll insert the flanges onto the outside of the wall box utilizing the flange mounting holes provided. When you go to mount your vertical pieces, you'll notice that one of the vertical pieces is solid and the other one will have two holes cut in it. The vertical piece with the holes in it will tell you that it mounts to the door side of the wall box because these holes will fit around the hinges of the door. Again, attach the flange to the wall box utilizing the provided holes. Secure the flanges to the wall box with the lock nuts that are provided with the trim kit. When you go to permanently secure the control panel into the wall, reinforce that wall with 2x4s or some other type of material that is going to be able to support the weight of the control panel and the backup batteries and then you'll utilize the semi flush mount holes inside the wall box to permanently affix this control panel in the wall. After you have the control panel mounted, I recommend removing the plastic flange from the control panel if you haven't done so already and then start with your AC power wiring. Ensure that the circuit breaker is off before you connect your AC power wires to the control panel. Start with your ground wire first. Your ground wire is going to connect to the terminal marked with the ground symbol. Second, connect your neutral wire to the terminal marked with the letter N. And lastly, connect your hot wire to the terminal marked with the letter L. When you go to connect your field wiring to the control panel, we recommend that you meter that wiring for opens, shorts, and grounds prior to connecting it to the panel itself. That way you can avoid running the risk of potentially damaging the control panel. I'd also like to point out that all of the wiring is power limited except for your AC and your backup battery wires. Maintain quarter inch spacing between the power limited and non-power limited wiring at all times. The non-power limited wiring should be kept in the unshaded area and the power limited wiring should be kept in the shaded area of the wall box. When you go to install your backup batteries, the FX5 cabinet itself will support up to two 7 amp hour batteries. If you have an installation that requires larger than 7 amp hour batteries, you're going to need to order the external battery cabinet, the BC1 or the BC2. The BC1 can support up to two 12 volt 40 amp hour batteries and the BC2 will support up to two 12 volt 17 amp hour batteries. That wraps up our installation video. If you'd like some more information, please return to our website, kidda-fire.com, or select the link below and you'll return to our YouTube site where you can view some additional product videos.